Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey y'all, it's me, Vassel Visage, and welcome back to Hide or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. Our queens were challenged to write lyrics to and learn choreo for power, a get out and vote disco themed drag anthem, which will be featured on Drag Race's upcoming Work the World tour. And the runway category was True Colors, Monochromatic Roy G. Biv Realness. Plus we'll be taking a look at some spicy entertainment weekly interviews with Joey Nolfi featuring Plasma, last week's Eliminated Queen, and Plain Jane, this week's Mother Teresa. First up, Plasma, whose elimination was a bit controversial in the fan base, considering she had two wins under her belt when she was ultimately sent home by Maya Amon LePage. In her interview, she opens up about not only having a Republican-leaning family, but family members who've actually run on the Republican platform, saying she's never voted Republican, but that hasn't stopped her and her family from growing close over the years, saying, my relationships with my family have never been stronger or more empowered. Also saying, I remember coming out to these people when I was a young person and having the most robust, incredible, empathetic response from people that I never saw it coming from. And regarding her elimination, which Nolfi describes as a Plasma says, the first thing Safira Cristal said to me when we touched base after filming was over was, Plasma, I love you, baby, but Maya ate your ass up in that lip sync. All I remember is that the shoes came off, the wig came off, and the birds on her shoulders came off. I was like, I'm going home. Apparently also having dissociated while all of this was going on. And to a question about Plain Jane asking, did drama with Plain seem to get better as the season progressed? She says, no. The farther along we got, personally, the less patience and capacity I had for Plain and her antics. In defense of Plain Jane, she walked in with an agenda and clearly and intentionally executed that agenda and I think she should be proud. She's doing a phenomenal job making reality television. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can catch her music video for the Bloody Mary song on her YouTube channel where she has the goth look she created ripped up by some other queens. But overall, even though her elimination I guess was controversial considering her track record, it's been nice to see her handle her elimination with such grace and be level-headed about what ultimately happened. Make sure to check out the rest of that interview link in the description in my video. And now let's dive into episode 10. First up, and in the order they appeared in the power number, wake up, babe, it's Dawn. And as it turns out, we're seeing our sweet little Dawn turn into kind of the new villain of the season. It's been funny to watch Plane and Dawn kind of switch villain arcs where we see Plane gradually getting a little more nice and congenial as we progress through the season. And to see Dawn go from being a sweet little angel to whispering evil deeds in Plane Jane's ear this episode, like when she tells her to tell Nick Nymphia that she's going to give Nymphia her immunity potion, but then not actually do it. In the challenge though, Dawn opens the power number singing, writing up laws will not stop our wild, healing up our inner child. And generally speaking, her verse tends to focus on being who you really are and not letting others stop you from doing that. But I did feel the lyrics in her verse were kind of wordy at times and even unintelligible in parts. And even the people making the captions for this show, I think weren't sure what she said in this one part where she said, who you are cannot be tamed. So bears, so don't bear their shame, which I'm still unclear about. Definitely though some simpler lyrics and clearer enunciation would have gone further for her in this challenge. But it was nice thematically, I think, to see her connect this verse to her story and personal journey overcoming her mental health struggles with the help of therapists. And regarding her choreo, I would say she did okay. It was relatively simple compared to some other queens like Maya or Safira. But we know dancing isn't necessarily her strongest asset, and seeing her stay in her wheelhouse was fine for me in this challenge. And overall, I'm going to give this a warming <laughs> On the runway, her true color is navy blue and she's giving us a little asmr sleep paralysis demon for our nerves but like in a little nighty slumber party gown and overall i love how dreamlike and surreal she's made this look the droopy arm sleeves and hat trailing behind her like a train are great details that add to the strangeness of it and i love the fabric pattern she used to create the top parts of this garment that kind of look like a starry night sky and by the way she says all of the materials used in this look are things that she would have found in her childhood bedroom and not only is the garment super cool but her makeup tonight is phenomenal. The spooky eyes are really great, and I love how she layered the black, blue, and then white lashes on top to create lots of drama up there. And I think the look is absolutely <laughs> And next up, Maya, Maya. But first, I thought I'd let you in on a little secret by answering the number one question I'm seeing in my comments this season. Dear Busty Queen, where are you watching RuPaul's Drag Race season 16? The answer, on streaming platforms I already pay for with the help of today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Cause here's the tea. There's tons of online content like RuPaul's Drag Race that gets geo-restricted by streaming platforms. In the US, for example, it's chocolate. 
But with the help of Surfshark, I can connect to a virtual private network server in somewhere like Germany. And just like that, I'm streaming season 16 plus untucked with just one click. I also love using Surfshark because it helps to block ads and trackers. And Surfshark keeps me safe from sneaky snoopers on public Wi-Fi and can even hide my internet traffic from my internet service provider. That's right. Surfshark VPN ensures a high level AES 256 GCM encryption for all of your internet activities, even walking that duck. And best of all, you can use Surfshark on all of your devices with unlimited device login. Plus, there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description of this video to start downloading Surfshark right now. And make sure to use code BUSSY at checkout to get three additional months of Surfshark for free. Thanks, Surfshark, for sponsoring today's video. And speaking of good girls gone bad, Miss Maya at the beginning of this episode was absolutely not having it with Morphine, which we kind of did get some hints at the beginning of this season that these two Miami girls were not besties, we'll say. But we haven't gotten an explanation on why that might be. But this episode, they were throwing jabs at each other because they were having the discussion of who would have won the lip sync had the bottom two been Morphine and Maya, where Morphine basically says there's no way she would have lost. And Maya says, well, your numbers are cute, but he would have lost. Anyways, in the challenge, Maya goes second and sings, living in a country where our rights should be equal, just because I'm gay don't make me less equal. And this rhyming equal with equal couplet was something that came up during rehearsals where we hear some other queens and confessionals talk about how they don't think that's a good idea. Ultimately though, Leland suggests she should just put more emphasis on that second equal, which she does, and rhyming the same word together didn't really matter to me that much. And I think her verse overall came out strong, but I think she could have gone even further with attitude and put some more punch in the other lines. She ends her segment with, don't let them win, let's keep it going, Martin Luther King, I have a dream. And her execution of the choreo in this challenge was phenomenal. I think she was maybe the best in terms of that tonight. And it was also great to see her go the extra mile and live up to her title as the queen of flips where she punctuates the end of her solo segment with a flip. This was hot. And over on the runway, her color is red. And this presentation is pretty. She's giving us pageantry with some beading and ostrich feathers that are cutely accessorizing her backside and the skirt of her dress. I will say though, this doesn't feel like something new for Maya, mostly because we did see her do a red flowers dress on the flower runway. And it seems we're getting a lot of runways from her that are kind of existing in that pretty pageant realm, which is fine, but some looks with more interesting concepts might be interesting going forward. That may or may not be a possibility for her though, because apparently she was missing like five runways that were ultimately not delivered by her designer. And so something she opened up about in Roscoe's viewing party saying this. I was leaving at 6 a.m. to go to the airport. I got the looks back that I wore on the show at 4 a.m. in the morning. And I kind of just laid down. I was like, forget it. I'm not going no more. But something just hit me and said, God put you in this position. So let's go. Let's let's go make TV. I just threw dresses and things that I had in my closet already in my bag, packed it up and went to the airport and flew to um, LA. All things considered though, I think she looks pretty. I'm gonna give this look a three flame. <laughs> and next up, Morphine, who I'll just say right now, really stepped up to the plate this episode. In the challenge, she does something unique with her verse where she structures the beginning parts of most of her lines with I got. I got that heat that inspires. I got that beat that desire. I got that drag that they ban on. And it ends with a little bit of attitude saying, y'all better get up and mother tucking vote because it's getting serious up in here. And this performance Morphine gave felt like a completely recharged, energized, and galvanized version of the Morphine that we've been seeing the past 10 episodes. And her lyric delivery and stage presence overall was just top tier. This was absolutely <laughs> And on the runway this week, her fire continues to to burn. She's got the color purple and she looks absolutely gorgeous. And we all know makeup and hair for Morphine have been absolutely top tier every single week on the runway, but garments have been a little hit or miss. Sometimes being a little too simple, like the bathing suit towel dress she wore in one of the first runways. But she has absolutely elevated her runway presentation in every single way this week. She is bodied perfectly. She's got an amazing silhouette going on. I love this hat with the purple fringe coming down and how the ombre of the purple across the different pieces of fabric or creating all these dimensions and shadows on her dress. This is absolutely gorgeous and totally <laughs> Next up, ooh, it's getting windy. <laughs> it's Nymphia Wind. And she opens her power number with some fairly generic, but nicely delivered lines. Aspire to community, Nymphia for equality, but ends with 
have a seat at the table when you vote yellow, which felt a little confusing to me. And I'll say generally, I think she was missing a consistent cadence in her lyrics and maybe even just missing lyrics, period. I feel like her verse more than any other Queens was a little empty, but the delivery was solid. She sounded good and looked even better. And what she didn't do in lyrics, she did in dancing. Like she absolutely nailed all of the choreo, which is especially obvious in her duo segment with Plain Jane, where she is absolutely dancing her in circles and Plain is looking a little lost. And Nymphia has in prior episodes played coy with her talents and abilities, but she does actually struggle this episode with these lyrics. And I've got to give this verse a and over on the runway, her color is, of course, yellow. Girls sit down at the table, vote yellow. And she really takes us by surprise, I think, when she embodies this color yellow with a bunch of bananas. Who could have guessed? This is a really solid look from her, and I love that she acknowledged the very clear Josephine Baker banana outfit reference, while also, I think, very much making it her own. I also like that there was a through line between her performance look and this look. That through line, of course, being yellow and bananas. But I do wonder how many more banana looks she's got in her suitcases. And I was initially scared of this when the season started, and she she did bananas for her entrance and those three reveal looks. But she's actually shown a ton of versatility, both in color use and not using bananas on all of her other runways. So I kind of forgot that that could have been an issue, which is all to say, I think this was a nice return to form for her. But in future episodes, I think if she does any more banana looks, she'll run the risk of overdoing it. Anyways, this look is <laughs> And next up, Drag Race's very own reality television mastermind, Plain Jane. And she, in the challenge, opens with, yeah, I've got the power and I'm I'm gonna have to use it. They're coming for our freedom and bitch, I'm gonna lose it. Ending with tell hate to kick rocks. And if you at the polls, you can catch this box. And she had a sexual overtone in her lyrics that was unique to her tonight in this song about self-empowerment and voting, which I could see maybe somebody rolling their eyes at, but I think it's also been made clear by Plain that she finds a lot of self-empowerment through her identity. And I think in that regard, she certainly gave us one of the most unique verses, plus was able to serve a bit of comedy. It's something no one else did in this challenge. I would actually say her verse is one of the most entertaining, but she struggles tonight with the choreo, mostly. And this is not as noticeable in her solo segment. She does okay there. It's really in, as I highlighted, that duo piece with Nymphia, where she looks kind of lost. And as Michelle calls out, this really was the first time she truly slipped up in a really obvious way. But because her verse was so strong, I'm overall going to give this a warm I mean, and over on the runway, her color tonight is green. And she's going for a little bit of pageantry and simple elegance with this gown. It's like a skin tone illusion mesh gown with some chunky emerald pieces and some kind of leafy branch looking stone pieces. And this look from plain surprised me because it is a little understated or dare I say plain, but it is a pretty gown and I appreciate her showing versatility across her runway looks. And this felt like a very safe for me. It's next up the letter Q, who in the challenge. Firstly, I don't know like if I just am not used to seeing Q in wigs because she pretty much never wears them on the runways, but her in this like berries and cream meets Michael Jackson wig fantasy really shook me. <laughs> it haunted me actually, I should say. I was not living for Q in that wig, but we'll brush that aside and look at her verse. She opens with, now we live in a crazy place. We're not all the same, but we need our space. It sings about keeping her man, saving the kids, and ends with cast your vote and tell the ones above. Take your power and spread the love. And her delivery is very theatrical and Q-like. And she was successful, I think, in putting a lot of personality into the delivery of her verse. But I do wish she had simplified her verse a bit. It was a little wordy for me and it was kind of coming off like a monologue essay or like someone doing slam poetry at a jazz club, but singing. And her dancing was okay. I would say like middle of the pack. And so I guess I'm kind of opposite on how how the judges viewed her tonight because they seem to not really like her white girl funk but loved her look overall though i'd give this a safe three flame hee <laughs> hee hot and on the runway her color is lavender and the hat she's wearing with all that fringe beading coming down is really a show-stopping piece but every other part of this outfit to me is off and i don't feel the top and pants and hat all work together it's almost like all those ruffles on the pants are fighting for attention instead of complimenting all that cool fringe drama. And something's really odd with the way the top's fitting. Plus I think without having a headpiece that adds like a foot of height to her, she did look noticeably shorter on this runway, which she could have easily fixed, I think, by letting the hat sit higher on her head. But there's just too many things about this that are off for me, so I'm gonna give it a rock. And finally, yes, we did save the best for last. It's Safira Cristal who closes out this power track singing, I'm an American, bleed red, white, and blue. I get the freedom to love, so much love for you. And ends telling her truth. The truth is, she's got power. And having watched her do this several times, I just have to say like she is such a professional in every single way. Her stage presence is absolutely unmatched and she can do all of the 
easy step this, step that choreo and also integrate fun tricks like splits and such into what she's doing easily. Plus her line delivery perfectly matches the funkiness of the song and her lyrics strike a perfect balance between simplicity and effectiveness. She was the perfect closer to this performance and nailed it in every single way. This was totally <laughs> and over on the runway. Oh my God. She is doing the color royal blue and says she's channeling Queen Charlotte. And this look is such a gag. It's jaw dropping, which isn't different for Sephira because girl, our jaws have been dropping almost every single week with her looks. But the question I keep wondering is how the hell did she get all of this to drag race? Like she must've had a Mary Poppins bag or an entire U-Haul deliver all of her drag costumes. This look is not just great because it's filling up the entire stage as she walks across it, but also because it's so elegant beautiful and absolutely embodying royal opulence. Like girl, Marge Simpson could never. Again, Zephyr is a true professional and she looks great in Sapphire. This look is hot. And regarding placements, when we get to critiques this week, we're reminded that Plain Jane is still sitting on her immunity potion, but has to use it this episode or it will expire. And she gives us the gag of the season by not using it on herself, but on Nymphia Wind, giving us a little Mother Teresa, Queen of Generosity moment. And she may truly have not been very self-aware that she could have very easily been in the bottom this episode, which was obviously such a gag because we as viewers just watched her give arguably one of the weakest performances this week. And I don't think the judges would have had any problem justifying a bottom placement for her. As to why she gave the immunity potion to Nymphia, she gave an explanation in an interview with Joey Nofley over at Entertainment Weekly saying this. Nymphia expressed to me she was worried she was in the bottom and she didn't feel confident in her performance. Essentially, that made me assume she also didn't do well. This week, it didn't serve me to be so prideful, but I thought Nymphia was in danger and if there's anything iconic I could do with this immunity potion other than saving myself, I'd rather give it to a friend who feels as though that they need it. And in this grand act of kindness, she completes her villain arc with a benevolent ending and makes great reality TV, as she has been every single episode. And although I'm not sure I could make the choice to give up an immunity potion that could maybe be the only thing that takes me to the final four and then win $200,000, for playing, it ultimately made sense. She is in this interview very self-aware of the character that she plays when she sits down in front of the camera in confessionals and and untucked, and is, I'm sure, also very aware of how the fans have treated villains from past seasons. And using this immunity potion on somebody else sort of gives her a get out of jail free card, I think, in the eyes of some fans, while also guaranteeing that if she were to be put in the bottom this episode, she wouldn't have to lip sync against Nymphia, who has already demonstrated this episode can outperform her. She even suggests in this interview that she thought the only other person who might end up in the bottom is Q, someone who's already been in the bottom too, and who is a self-professed not great dancer. Which is all to say, using the immunity potion or not, she likely knew that she was not going to be sent home this episode. But none of that really matters in the end anyways, because the twist of this episode is everybody's safe. Except our top two, Safira and Morphine, who I absolutely agree with, did the best in this challenge. They really stepped up to the plate and took it all the way home for me. So they lip sync for the win, which I did react to, as well as the best parts of this episode over on my Patreon. And you can watch that exclusive reaction video by clicking the link in the description of my video to join my Patreon. See you there. But let me just say, I'm not the biggest Megan Trainer fan. And so I was kind of setting myself up to maybe not like this lip sync. But Safira found a way to absolutely destroy this. I mean, she added a level of fun and camp to this and made it seem so silly that I loved every second of it. Morphine, though, in this lip sync, uh, got a little lost in the sauce or lost in her dress and then lost in her wig. And she never really recovered from that. And so Safira takes her second challenge win, rightly so. Considering my final thoughts on this episode, I will say like this was very plainly a planned non-elimination episode. I just can't imagine a world in which they were going to send someone home on an episode about unity and voting and empowerment. Plus it was clear they set all these queens up for success. The challenge was executed so well across the board. The production value and the actual track, phenomenal. And how everything was shot and lit while they were performing was also incredible. I was genuinely excited watching this performance and it made me feel uplifted and energetic. Plus it was the perfect way to, in a US voting year, hopefully energize some people to register to vote and ultimately exercise that right to vote. Make sure you vote. But for real to all my fellow US citizens, y'all, 
better though. No cap, all facts, no printer, Riz on God, slay boots, yes God, mama, goon. And after my hottest hots in the challenge and runway this week, I'm gonna give it to Sephira Crystal. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots and this week they've chosen Sephira Crystal in the challenge and on the runway. And I wanna give an extra special thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN, who I've trusted for several years now to help me unlock geo-restricted content and keep me safe while browsing online. Don't forget to click my link below to download Surfshark today and use code BUSSY at checkout to get three additional months of Surfshark for free. And finally, I wanna give an extra special thank you to Ashley Brungard, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Fa Leisha, Laura, Matthew Burns, Steven Topher, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier over at patreon.com slash Queen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.